the official party, please remain standing for the national anthem. Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Beasley, Headmaster, Dr. Moulds, members of the Board of Trustees, staff, invited guests, and fellow grammarians, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Rockhampton Grammar School's 2019 Speech Day Ceremony. We are delighted you have taken the time to join us on this very special occasion. Please take a moment to switch off silent, to switch mobile phones to silent or to turn them off. It is my pleasure now to invite Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Beasley, to deliver his annual report. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and students. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, 
Welcome also to our 2019 Secondary School Speech Day. This has been another year of success and achievement for our Campton Grammar as we draw to the end of our 138th year of continued operation. It's pleasing to report that our goals have been fulfilled and our strategy implemented. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr Moles has continued to lead our school again this year and has done so with exceptional results, not only academically through NAPLAN and the OP system, but also in every other operational area for grammar. Our congratulations to Dr Moles. We have and are experiencing a change in our senior leadership team. Firstly, with the retirement of Ms Denise Wright as head of senior school earlier this year, and shortly Mr Arthur Kelly in only a few days' time at the end of this school year. Ms Wright served grammar with high distinction from the commencement of her time with us in August 1984, through appointment as head of senior school in January 1999, until her well-deserved retirement from teaching earlier this year. Denise's empathy for students and her ability to rally teachers and staff have left an indelible mark on grammar. Mr Kelly, Arthur started with us in April 1984, progressing to senior master in 1999 and has been deputy headmaster since 2004. 36 years of outstanding achievement, passion for the school and wise guidance deserve our highest praise. And as we know, beside every great person stands another great person, and Mrs Aileen Kelly has been here at school for 33 of those 36 years. On behalf of the entire school, past, present and future, would you please join with me in expressing our deepest thanks to Ms Wright and particularly today, Mr and Mrs Kelly. As referred to earlier, Grammar's academic performance has been exceptional and on par with or better than the school's previous best results. ATAR has been the focus of the senior school, but this has not been at the expense of the last year of the OP system, with Grammar determined to finish this method of assessment at the same high levels it has demonstrated year in, year out since OPs began. Our operational performance has met all targets and financially the school continues its history of sound and prudent management with a surplus to be recorded again this year. As reported at last year's speech day, a newly formatted school survey was completed in 2018 and 2019 has seen the implementation of a number of findings from that survey. Likewise, a review of boarding was conducted in 2018 and again many of the recommendations have been implemented this year. In Term 3 of 2019, we conducted an external risk review in conjunction with Independent Schools Queensland and we've only just recently received the full written report. In the executive summary, it was pleasing to read, and I quote, both the attitude and practice with respect to operational risk management at the school was very good, with numerous comments by staff of the focus and support provided by senior management. Having said that, however, we do have a number of actions to take out of the report and these will be progressed in 2020. You hear us say many times that we're a boarding school and not just a school with boarders. We repeat this saying often to ensure our culture is embedded in all aspects of school life. Rockhampton Grammar cherishes its deep relationship with the boarding community, particularly the rural community, and our thoughts are with them in this time of severe drought. We greatly respect the trust and confidence that parents place in us to give us the care and well-being of their children 24 hours a day. On the screen behind me are the seven critical projects to be achieved by the school 
during 2019. We have effectively implemented the preparation for ATAR. We are well underway with the enterprise agreement process. We have again successfully pursued our international engagement this year. In accordance with the findings of the Royal Commission, we firstly reviewed and then implemented some changes where necessary to our child welfare practices. We responded to the boarding review, as I've mentioned. This year, the school has conducted research into the effect of mobile devices on student learning. As a result, we've made some changes to our mobile policy and we are even daring to consider having a technology-free week next year. And finally, we are well progressed with the establishment of our English language school, having received preliminary advice just a few days ago on the 22nd of November that our accreditation would be approved. We thank our students, our parents and our staff members for their willing participation in the grammar experience again this year. Whether it be students striving for that extra academic or sporting achievement, the dedication shown by our parents, or our teachers and support staff going above and beyond the call of duty, you are very much appreciated and we do thank you. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow board members here today for their tireless school support, their voluntary contribution of time and the good governance they bring to grammar. The year ahead is quite exciting for us as the first full year of assessment in the ATAR system. However, we're also looking forward to implementing some innovations that are in the pipeline such as the Principal's Recommendation Program in conjunction with Central Queensland University to offer an alternate pathway to tertiary study. And by bringing the Certificate 3 in Agriculture into our own RTO program this year, now allows us to explore further vocational education opportunities in 2020. A year well completed lays a great platform for what lies in front of us next year. Before I close today, and not surprisingly, I'd like to reflect upon my favourite sport, and that's cricket. Not the test match that we've just won, but the lesson that has come out of the last 12 to 18 months. In particular, Stephen Smith. He was captain at the time, and he made a mistake, a huge mistake. He was heavily penalised and suffered a lot of criticism and personal anguish. But he didn't walk away. Through hard work, a willing spirit and the right attitude, he has taken great steps to redeem himself, particularly during the recent Ashes series in England. The moral for us is that we all make mistakes, every single one of us. But it is how you deal with those mistakes that truly define you as a person. I'm sure we all hope Steve Smith continues to set a great example for us to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, Speech Day is a wonderful opportunity to reflect upon the success of our students. Please enjoy your afternoon, have a safe and happy holiday period, and we look forward to seeing those of you returning next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beasley. Our first music item this afternoon features the Senior String Ensemble, directed by Ms. Lynn Yun. They will play Slavonic Dances by Antonin Dvorak. Please welcome the Strings Ensemble and Ms. Yun.
am pleased to invite our headmaster, Dr. Moulds, to address the assembly. Good afternoon, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Brad Beasley, members of the Board of Trustees, parents, invited guests, staff, and most importantly, students of the Rockhampton Grammar School. It has been my privilege to be headmaster of the Rockhampton Grammar School for 10 years. This decade of community achievement has been largely characterised by strong year-on-year -year student outcomes, the professional advancement of staff, and strides forward in our co-curricular programs, school-wide services, and campus resources. Consistently outstanding OP and NAPLAN results are hallmarks of RGS. So are students, young women and men in service to the community. From farmers in drought, to blood drives, to environmental rejuvenation schemes, to, new, to a new program this year designed by students to ensure that overseas visitors are warmly welcomed here at RGS. At every grade level, there is worthy community involvement. Staff engaged to advance their own knowledge, as well as their students, is also a hallmark of this school. Our commitment to the RGS Teachers Masters Program goes beyond what any other school provides and is something we are very proud of. 16 teachers have graduated from the program so far, with Mr John Croslin, and Mrs. Persephone Cook graduating in 2009. Please join with me in congratulating those members of staff. <laughs> Farms, dance studios, extended green spaces for sport, a larger, more comprehensive early learning centre, an increasingly robust and far reaching endowment and scholarship program. All are significant accomplishments and hallmarks of our great school. Our global education program is gaining significant momentum. A new language centre on its way will transform our services and provide to us and our community resources and expertise to serve a growing number of students. Growth in character and scholarship informs everything we do at Grammar. It is simply foundational. Which is why I'm very pleased to announce to you today a new school partnership with the Centre for Creative Leadership, CCL, a global operation based in the United States and ranked amongst the top five business schools in the world. <coughs> Consistent with our school-wide emphasis on leadership development and the launch of the RGS Leadership Institute, we want to go deeper into leadership and further develop our students' mindsets around leadership, character development and increased scholarship. We want students to think critically we want them to be more aware of themselves and their surroundings. And most importantly, to develop meaningful and truly productive relationships with each other. We also want students to have access to people and to programs and resources that are on the forefront of leadership development, which is why we've established that partnership with CCL. Harnessing relationships, growing from setbacks, learning by doing, accelerating development by actually slowing down, practising humility to develop greatness. These are some of the big themes associated with creative leadership and are crucially important life lessons in lifelong learning. All of it which will benefit the school and us as individuals for decades to come. None of this will come easily. Significant accomplishments don't come easily. They are earned, and we know this, especially on a day such as this. Sometimes I find asking myself, well, what do accomplishments actually accomplish? Great outcomes one year do not ensure excellent results the next. A 2019 sports championship will not guarantee a place in the finals in 2020. We're all here today because of notable achievements. But what about next November? When we set out to accomplish something, we set out with a purpose. That purpose cannot be fulfilled unless there is an opportunity to do so. The three are related. Purpose, 
opportunity and accomplishment. It's like a chemistry equation. Purpose is the main element, opportunity is the catalyst, and the accomplishment is the outcome of the experiment, the realised value of effort. Sometimes things blow up. That's the best bit. Sometimes things fizzle out. But like all experiments, you walk away knowing more, growing and learning from that experience. And eventually, you find a formula that works, that hopefully results in a positive chain reaction. In other words, your accomplishments will bring the next opportunity and further your purpose, propelling you towards your next accomplishment and so on. Anyone who's taken chemistry knows that variables can often take you on a totally different course of discovery too. An outcome that is unexpected, but no less satisfying. A donor to our 1881 endowment has accomplished a lot in his life. That person told me there was an opportunity presented to him, a scholarship to his high school, something unexpected that enabled him to channel his purpose and pursue his career in health. Similarly, an IGS bursary has helped a recent student attend our school, pursue her ambitions in a role at one of Australia's top art institutions and start her own career. Another recent graduate who was at medical school now is doing something she always wanted to do, thanks to the opportunity an RGS bursary provided. In each of their cases, and there are many more, they achieved success with the quiet financial help of accomplished people who felt a sense of purpose and had an opportunity to make a difference and see from a distance the results of their contribution. Purpose, opportunity, accomplishment. A chain reaction here in the case of the 1881 endowment program that occurs over and over again thanks to the generosity of new and continuing donors to our community. Students, parents and relatives, teachers, staff and friends, we're all part of the community, the chemistry equation. We don't always have perfect solutions, but we do do an excellent job working together and we are accomplishing great things together, some of which we celebrate today. This year marks the end of the teaching careers for three very long-term members of staff, Deputy Headmaster Mr Arthur Kelly, Mrs Aileen Kelly, and Head of Senior School Ms Denise Wright, three stalwarts of the Rockhampton Grammar School, three parents of Rockhampton Grammar School students, and three people who have accomplished great things for us for decades. Arthur and Aileen, your accomplishments and significance to our community cannot be conveyed in a speech such as this, but please know how much you are loved and respected and how much we will miss you. Please join with me in congratulating Arthur and Aileen. I'd like to acknowledge and sincerely thank the Board of Trustees for the enormous contribution they make to our school. While they bring an impressive range of skills and expertise to the governance of the school, they share a passion and a loyalty to its development and devote extraordinary time to its service. In particular, I thank the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr Brad Beasley, whose wise, calm and honest advice has been of great benefit to me over the last 10 years. Please join with me in thanking the Board of Trustees. <laughs> Students, the awards you will receive today obviously will not be your last accomplishment. Which brings me back around to that question again. What exactly will these accomplishments accomplish? How will you use them and own, for your own benefit and for the benefit of others? Are you thinking about your purpose? What opportunities lie ahead? And what do you really want to accomplish next? My purpose is to serve you. I'm blessed with that opportunity every single day. And my greatest accomplishment is to be able to grow with you every day and share in your accomplishments as your headmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Dr Moulds. 
Our next musical item features the small jazz ensemble directed by Dr. Moulds. They will perform Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Please make them welcome.
I now invite Mr. Kelly, Deputy Headmaster, to read the Middle School Awards and Dr. Moulds to make the presentations. It gives me great pleasure to announce the Middle School Awards for 2019. And we commence with the first prize in Year 7, a general proficiency prize, that goes to Mohid Khalil. Also receiving general proficiency, Elena Lecker. <laughs> the Outstanding Girl Border Prize in Year 7 goes to Brooke Hudson. The first of our Habits and Values Awards in Year 7, and there's one for each form class, goes to Alice MacDonald of 7B. <laughs> also receiving a Habits and Value Award, Hallie Cooper. The Habits and Value Award for 7E goes to uh, Caitlin Hill. <laughs> Year 7 Prize for Design and Workshop goes to Avanea Suntara Vadivo. Prize for First in Drama goes to Millie O'Brien. First place in Japanese, Savi Singh. Mathematics Prize in Year 7 goes to Isabella Yorn. <laughs> and first in Music, Ariana Hansen. Receiving a General Proficiency Award in Year 7 and the Habits and Value Award for 7C, Adi Verma. <laughs> the prize for First in English 
and also receiving a Habits and Value Award for uh, Form Class 7F, Trinity Hutt. The Digital Technology Prize and the prize for textile and food technology goes to Quinn Malone. <laughs> the Outstanding Boy Border in Year 7 and also receiving the Mace Family Shield for the most improved year seven goes to Riley Sullivan. <laughs> Prizes for first in business enterprise and management, geography, history, Health and Physical Education, Science, and the Rockhampton Grammar School Past Students Association Prize for first in year seven, Martha Dingle. The first of our Year 8 prizes, it's a General Improvement Prize, and that goes to Cooper McKenzie. <laughs> there are three General Proficiency Prizes in Year 8, and the first of those goes to Danielle Clark. Also receiving general prof proficiency, Ella McCauley. <laughs> and the third general proficiency prize goes to Brooke Peckett. Colin and Pauline Ash Trophy for Outstanding Girl Border in Year 8 goes to Savannah Fletcher. Alice Humphreys receives the first Habits and Values Award for Year 8A. The 8B Habits and Value Award goes to Jared Moretti. The 8C Habits and Value Award goes to Alice Saunders. <coughs> the Habits and Value Award for 8D goes to Samantha Remington. The 8E Habits and Value Award goes to Amelie Trippett.
First in agriculture in year eight is Gabby Seifer. And first in design, Kiera Lowe. The Year 8 Digital Technology Prize goes to Jack Cooper. First in English is Mazuba Kohino. And the Health and Physical Education Prize goes to Gabby McRae. Receiving prizes for business enterprise and management and health, sport and exercise science, Benjamin Wood. <laughs> the prize for first in history and the Eggleshaw Trophy for first in Japanese go to Kavir Vignaraja. First in mathematics, first in drama, and first in music is Michaela Hilber. Receiving prizes for first in art, food technology, the Habits and Value Award for 8F, and the school prize for Outstanding Boy Border in Year 8 is Knox Burnham. The prize for first in geography, the Westpac Bank Corporation Award for first in science, and excuse me, <coughs> and the Rockhampton Grammar School Past Students Association Prize for first in year eight is Ava Trigaya. We move on to the Year 9 prizes now, and the first of these is the C.C. Bolden Prize for General Improvement, and that goes to Jack Weston. <laughs> there are two General Proficiency Prizes in Year 9, and the first goes to Dominic Sleaford. And the second goes to Jacqueline Sleaford. <laughs> the Colin and Pauline Ash Trophy for Outstanding Girl Border in Year 9 this year goes to Lucy Chay.
Receiving a Habits and Values Award for Year 9D is Bradley Taylor. And the Habits and Value, Values Award for 9F go to Jet Grundy. The Business Enterprise and Management Award goes to Lily Rup Narayanasinghe. And first in design is Harrison Rogers. The United Digital Technology Prize goes to Alexia Sison. <laughs> Receiving the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for first in English is Pabon Siddiqui. First in health, sport and exercise science is Nicola Scarpelli. <laughs> Receiving the Edel Short Trophy for first in Japanese is Vashnavi Chapiri. Prize for first in science goes to Justin Besch. <laughs> the Year 9 Art Prize goes to Kiana Muller. And first in the workshop, Michaela Flannery. <laughs> the McFarlane Prize for Leadership and Service goes to Henry Dingle. Receiving the Habits and Values Award for Year 9A and a prize in general proficiency, India Ivers. <laughs> Receiving a Habits and value, Values Award for 9B and the prize for first in food technology, Ella Giles. The Habits and Values Award for 9E and the T.W. Conaghan Family Trophy for First in Drama goes to Shannon Smith. <laughs> the Wheel Randangi Cup for First in Agriculture a Habits and Values Award for 9C and first in health and physical education is Megan Adamski.
The prize for first in geography and the South Family Prize for first in advanced science goes to George Plum. The David and Trevor Patterson Memorial Trophy for first in advanced mathematics and first in music and the Rockhampton Grammar School Past Students Prize for first in year nine and ducks of the middle school is Melissa Drainer. Thank you, Dr. Moulds and Mr. Kelly. Our next music item features the secondary choir, directed by Mrs. Rhonda Height and accompanied by Sansuka de Silva. They will perform Invictus by Lachlan Moulds, words by William Ernest Henley. Please make them welcome.
It is my pleasure to invite Mrs Wright, Acting Head of the Senior School, to announce the Senior School Awards and Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr Beasley, to make the presentations. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the 2019 Year 10, 11 and 12 Speech Day Prize Awards. Please welcome the first of our Year 10 Prize winners for first in Introduction to Senior Agriculture, Miranda Luck. For first in introduction to senior art, Siyumi Disaranyakia. <laughs> first in essential English, Cameron Mortimer. The Annette and Darrell Daly Rockhampton Trophy Centre Award for First in General Mathematics, Casey Hafey. <laughs> the Arthur Butler P and F Geography Prize, Sally Adamski. The Theodore Kingle Prize for First in Advanced Mathematics, Kathleen Hahn. <laughs> First in Essential Science, Lara Matukin. First in Introduction to Industry, Thomas Matson. As a Year 10 student, but first in Year 11 dance, Peyton Cordell. First in Introduction to Senior Design, Joanna Bailey. First in Introduction to Senior Music, Lily Morrison. First in Health and Physical Education, Madison Acton. <laughs> the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency, Jane Brighton. And our second recipient, recipient for the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency, McGill Rajaji. <laughs> 
the EW Luck Cup for Character Development in Year 10, and the School Prize for Outstanding Boy Boarder, Riley Godwin. The Gloria and Peter Hansen Memorial Trophy for Character Development in Year 10 and our third recipient of the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency, the Sunni Ama Perle Gamalaga. The C.C. Boland Prize for General Improvement in Year 10 and first in introduction to senior health and physical education, Brianna McKenzie. <laughs> the Robert Mackay Brown History Prize and first in history, Grace Garraway. The award for leadership and service in year 10, Mrs. J. Wheatcroft Memorial Prize for first in English, first in global studies, first in Japanese, the South Family Prize for first in advanced science, first in introduction to senior philosophy, reasoning and psychology, and the Rockhampton Grammar School Past Students Association Prize for first in year 10, Hashitha Pedareddy. Please now welcome the first of our Year 11 prize winners. The Colleen and Pauline Ash Trophy for Outstanding Girl Boarder, Casey Frame. The John and Linda Crosland Prize for Best Boy Boarder, Nicholas Storey. A.T. Clark Cup for Character Development in Year 11, Andrew MacArthur. <laughs> the John and Ruth Bath Prize for General Improvement in Year 11, Nancy Duong. Chris and Mitchell Peterson Prize for a continuing student from Year 11 into Year 12, Rory Minty. <laughs> the Geoffrey Reed Memorial Prize for Outstanding Achievement and first, for First in Agricultural Science, Taylor O'Toole. First in Aquatic Practices, Lucas Johnson. First in Business, Aditya Bajaj. The John Carkeet Cup for Best Business Studies student, Peter New.
first in English as an additional language, Shenzhen Ma. First in geography, Rowan Nichols. First in general mathematics, Rowan Mace. First in essential mathematics, Lara Woodrow. First in psychology, Charlotte Inglis. First in physical education, Patrick Shea. The South and Geldard Lawyers Award for First in Legal Studies, Freya Jemet Gavel. First in Industrial Technology Skills, PJ Glasson. First in design, Lydia Hayes. The A. Palmer Trophy for first in drama, Olivia Offord. First of our seven Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy Awards in general proficiency, Joel Prichton. The Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for general proficiency, Hayden Brown. Third of our Peter and Nina Van Vakaris trophies for general proficiency goes to Eliza Cowan. Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency goes to Liam Peterson. <laughs> the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency, Molly McGrath. Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency, Davis White. <laughs> the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for General Proficiency, Nikili Ryan.
the Morning Bulletin Prize for First in English and First in Biology, Lily Bain. First in Ancient History and First in Visual Arts, Benjamin Scott. First in Japanese and the John and Elizabeth Blair Memorial Prize for Best Two Year Ten Passes in 2018, Hassi Wirasinger Mega Watergate. <laughs> first in Literature, the Rockhampton Trophy Centre Award for First in Mathematical Methods. First in Specialist Maths, First in Chemistry, First in Physics, the Birkbeck and Associates Award for First in Accounting, the John and Elizabeth Blair Memorial Prize for Best Two Year Ten Passes in 2018, the Fitzroy Jardine Memorial Prize for Academic and Leadership Contribution to the School, and the Rockhampton Grammar School Past Students Association Prize for First in Year 11, Sensuka de Silva. Please now welcome the first of our Year 12 prize winners. The Conigan Memorial Cup for Character Development in the Senior Form, Bahuni Gunasinga. <laughs> the Peter and Nina Van Vicaris Trophy for General Proficiency in Year 12, Geneva Cox. Peter and Nina Van Vicaris Trophy for General Proficiency in Year 12 also goes to Jack Moran. <laughs> the Peter and Nina Van Vicaris Trophy for General Proficiency in Year 12, Renee Sweeney. And the Peter and Nina Van Vicaris Trophy for General Proficiency in Year 12 also goes to Mackenzie Wood. <laughs> First in Aquatic Practices, Kiralee Shim. The City Printing Works Award for First in Accounting, Pru Pigeon. First in Health Education, Kennedy MacDonald. A. Volk Family Prize for First in Mathematics A, Grace Weston. <laughs> the Mark Coombe Outback Art Award for First in Visual Arts, Madeline Sparrow.
the Peter and Nina Van Vakaris Trophy for First in Geography, Isabella Hansen. The John Wheatcroft Cup for Best Exemplar of the School Motto, Macte Virtu et Literis, Olivia Maynard. The C.C. Boland Cup for Athletic Prowess, Grace Cipher. <laughs> the Andrews and Girl Architect Prize for First in Graphics, Georgie Keating. The Ian R. Milroy Memorial Trophy for First in Agricultural Science, Mackenzie Leeson. The Argus Trophy for Greatest Contribution to Drama, Wesley Muir. The Antil Wills Memorial Trophy for First in Physical Education, Hayden Richardson. <laughs> First in Technology Studies, Ned Peters. The R. H. Mackenzie Cup for Interest and Service Out of School and the Interhouse Mackenzie Shield and Captain of Jardine House, Caitlin Gardy. <laughs> the Pierre de Coubertin Award for Initiative, Teamwork, Sportsmanship and Fair Play in a Variety of Sports and the boy captain for the Interhouse Mackenzie Shield and captain of Jardine House, Jaden Mills. <laughs> the Roxborough Trophy for Extending Girl Border and the 2014 Seniors Prize for Service and Spirit, Tony Lamb. The Nicholas K. Fitzgerald, you, sorry, the Nicholas K. Fitzgerald Yuldale Memorial Prize for Passionate Music Endeavours and Humanitarian Ideals, and the Gladstone Ports Corporation Student of the Year, Lachlan Moulds. The Milan Family Trophy and Caltech's Best All-Rounder for First in Biology and the RAM Trophy for Outstanding Achievement and School Spirit, William Atherington. Florence and William Thompson Memorial Prize for Proficiency in English, the RGS Music Council Award for First in Music, 
the Peter Leslie Foote Quiet Achiever Award Memorial Trophy, Harrison Hooper. The CQ University Australia and Paul Palmer Cup for First in Business Management, the CQ University Australia Prize and South and Geldard Lawyers Award for First in Legal Studies and the John Carkeet Cup for Best Business Studies Student in Year 12, Caitlin Spence. The Sylvia Dixon Trophy for Interest in Physical Development and Athletic Proficiency and the John Wheatcroft Cup for Best Exemplar of the School Motto, Macte Virtue et Literis, Sean MacDonald. The Headmasters Cup for Leadership and Service, the Australian Defence Force Long Tan Prize for Teamwork and Leadership Bursary in Year 12, the Kello Memorial Prize for First in English and the Bolt Family Prize for First in English Extension, Paige Baker. First in Chemistry, the C.C. Boland Prize for First in Mathematics B, the C.C. Boland Prize for First in Mathematics C, First in Physics, the C.Q. University Australia Prize for First in Information Processing and Technology whilst in Year 11, the RGS Music Council Award for Year 12 Music Extension Performance, the John and Elizabeth Blair Memorial Prize for Best Two Year 10 Passes in 2017, the RJ McFarlane Cup for the highest average in the secondary school, the Trustees Prize, the Rockhampton Grammar School Pass Students Association and Deputy Headmasters Cup for best average in the senior form and the 2019 Ducks of the Rockhampton Grammar School, James Vandeleur. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Beasley, Mrs. Wright, and Mr. Peckett. It is my pleasure to invite our 2019 school captains, Olivia and Sean, to deliver their captain's address. A lot of things have changed since we've been at Grammar. The Birkbeck was built, we got a new health centre, and the Duggan Hall drop-off was introduced. But I'm sure, as we've all heard, these are just the bricks and mortar. And there's so much more to our community than these material changes. The people. That's what has created and shaped the pride that we have for our school. Good afternoon, 
Good afternoon, Dr. Moulds, Mr. Kelly, Mrs. Wright, staff, parents, and fellow students. Today, we are here to commend the academic achievements over the past year. However, let's first recognise the countless opportunities that we are offered here at Grammar, not only in the classroom, but also within the extracurricular activities to, that are available to the students. The school is constantly encouraging us to be more involved within the community, whether it be serving at events, supporting charities, or just being a friendly face around the school. The truly great achievements that we are here to celebrate are outstanding. However, the Rockhampton Grammar School understands that not everyone is aiming to head down the same path in life. Whether you're an OP or non-OP student, aspiring to study medicine or looking for a diesel fitting apprenticeship, the school will be there every step of the way. I'm sure I'm not the only person who is truly grateful for this guidance. For all of this support and guidance, we'd like to say thank you. Without the team of staff here at the school, I'm sure many of us would not be receiving awards today. For all the late nights marking drafts and the weekends spent planning classes. To all of the teachers, your tireless efforts in and outside the classroom do not go unnoticed. So from all of us, thank you. We would also like to thank the grounds and maintenance crews, cleaning and kitchen staff for all of the behind the scenes work. And finally, thank you to the students. Take hold of the opportunities that come your way and don't be afraid to try new things. 2020 is going to be a massive year. Being the first year of ATAR was always going to be challenging. However, led by the four captains, we know you'll all get through it. So we wish you the best of luck and hope you have a great Christmas break. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the staff and students of the Rockhampton Grammar School, we thank you for joining us in this celebration of outstanding student achievement and talent. Following the ceremony, there will be time for prize winners to have photos taken with their prizes. However, those who have trophies are asked to return them to the tables at the front of the hall before departing. We wish you a safe journey home and a happy and holy Christmas. Please stand for the singing of the school song and remain standing as the official party departs.
Please be seated.